Hi guys, welcome to the Killian Family Homestead. Uh, this is going to be a quick video. At least I'm going to try to make it quick. Um, on the little adaptations that, that make a big difference on this aquaculture system. Take a look at this. <clears throat> so this, this right here is the main line that comes in from the pump. It goes from a 2 inch all the way to a 1 inch. I mean, it, it, the, I wanted the pressure to build up. You can also see how the height of each one of these four risers is the same. But naturally because this one is closest to the pump, and this one's at the very end of the line. If I open these valves up all the way, a lot of the water flow goes into these large totes. And it's one reason why the it's so efficient and moves a lot of waste out of the system because there's, I, can, I can have a lot of water flow in here. But obviously, there's only so much water flow that pump pushes out. And if I will put a lot into these totes, then the main system over here doesn't get anything. So, it goes from two inch, like I said, to one inch, one inch to three quarters inch, three quarters inch into a half an inch, and then I have this half an inch to a little, it's, it's an airline uh, uh, adapter, it's a female adapter, and it creates a lot of pressure behind it, pushing the water through and creating a lot of diffused micro bubbles of oxygen putting into the water, which is great. So this has a lot of benefit to it. As well as, as you can see here, I only have this thing slightly turned on. And because the pressure is built up by what I've done here, it's able to accomplish a lot of things. I'm able to have enough water for that side, as well as diffusing enough oxygen into the water here. And um, pushing enough water in as well to elevate the, the water level and to put get waste out of the system. I did the same thing on this side as well. It's just pretty dark in the garage. It's, it's at night time right now, so sorry about that. Okay, let me show you a couple other adaptations. Another adaptation, um, I just flushed the system again at night to, to just to get it all the way clean and get the pH back up to 7.1, which I was successful at, yay. Um, I took a very uh, a extra pump that I had just lying around and I slapped it to the side there and that's creating some water flow and some aeration as well to get any remaining um, chlorines or chloramines that are in the system right now. So remember, inexpensive little pump, water circulation is very important for your reserve tank. I've got the electrical hooked up here, that's nothing special. But one thing I did hook up, which I really like, is these, these um, two temperature gauges here. Now the reason why the temperature is so low is that I just back uh, back flowed or, or flushed the system and uh, haven't bought a heater for the reserve tank. So you've, you've put in a bunch of cold water into the system and the temperature immediately goes down. So I gotta fix, on, fix that. I also have a light here that helps when I'm trying to see the fish and see the, the health of the fish. This little pump right here, I've got it flush and flat pushes the air both into these two totes, which I probably don't need anymore because of my adaptation on that. Um, because I probably need more and more oxygen into this system right here. Why do you need oxygen? Because you want to do the aerobic activity uh, of this bacteria so you don't get any bad smells. And if I grab some of this biomedia and I smell it, it smells clean and okay, but I can, there, there is a little bit of that bad smell in it, just a little bit, and it can get away from get away from you real fast if you don't attend to it. So I would really like to put probably all four or six stones right directly into this so that the oxygen takes care of the smell. Another thing that I did, you probably, there's no way you're going to see that. Uh, nope. <laughs> I talked about this before. But at the end of this bucket, this bucket is sitting over two standpipes. The black pipe there comes out at a 45, 45 degree angle straight up and again, and it pushes all the waste out. Now, I, I couldn't put the bucket any further down because it was butting up against the bottom of that pipe. But what I did do is put a net mesh around it, further forcing the solids down to the bottom, and it's doing a better job trapping the solids and waste inside of here. Playing along with the, the same thing that I did in the totes, um, 
I, you know, right here you have a one inch, one inch, and it goes to a three quarters inch, but it's one of those screw on uh, adapters. The reason why I use those is that it's more of a smooth um, exit. Um, see if I can put yeah, get one and show you what I mean. Some of the adapters that you buy from a one inch to a three quarters inch or a one inch to a half an inch are more block, you know, it, it, it's not as smooth. I don't know if you can tell, but, it, but it, when the water hit, hits that, it's not a huge restriction, it just flows down in and takes it from a one inch flow capacity down to a three quarters inch. It's really good um, because I wanted the water to back out, back up a little bit, creating more flow between the two. We also got to keep this level, it seems to shift on me, to make sure the water flows equally on both sides. Something I just did is I turned this off. I've had this on through the life, the past year, the life of this system. I turned this off now with the new pump and it just seems to be a better flow rate on each one of these. So I'm gonna experiment with that, keeping that off. Now what's the risk of keeping that off? The risk is, is that the whole reason why I have this in there is to create equilibrium between these two media tanks up above here. But I'm just gonna experiment, that's part of it. When you build these systems, I believe in trying to repurpose stuff and recycle stuff. But you have to buy some things new this is one thing that I bought new. But you can see here, I was, you know, I, I didn't have to use these uh, right here because this is a this is a outdoor above ground uh, swimming pool pump is what it does, and these pipes are meant to connect into the swimming pool. What am I going to use them for? Well, I have this permanent or, or um, permanently uh, plumbed in there, and it takes the water and it's connected right directly to. The, the line out of the system. So I've timed this and it takes 12 minutes every Saturday, 12 minutes to come out here, turn this off, move this from the filter position to the rinse position. I shift it over there, turn it back on and it pushes water out here as it's cleaning everything within the sand filter pushes it down to the, the valve and it goes out to wherever I want it to, typically um, out to garden beds and stuff like that. Then I come back and I turn, it, I, I turn it off, I shift this back over to filter or to closed, and then I leave it be, and I come in here and I take this off and mix the water up. There's just all kinds of gunk and solids in there. Turn on the exit valve right there, boom, and it flushes the system out because it's a big one and a half inch pipe and a two inch pipe in some places that it just flows that water out quickly close it up backfill from the reserve tank 12 minutes i'm done so that's a huge huge deal that we were able to accomplish this winter time to make sure that this thing isn't a pain in the rear to service now last comment here the reason why i have water constantly flowing and hitting hitting the surface of the water is that this is in my garage there's in it's the garage is distant from all the bedrooms and stuff like that and the neighbors also can't hear it a lot of people that have aquaculture systems try to avoid cascading water because it creates a lot of noise and neighbors may not like it um, I, I support that that makes perfect sense to me what, what people usually do is they'll build venturis which means you're putting the pipe all the way into the water and you have some sort of device that sucks air as the water is flushing through. It sucks air because it's going from a high pressure, low pressure system, and it pushes the air into it and diffuses it into the, into the actual body of the water. Now, the reason why this is good is it doesn't have the whole cascading noise effect. But I don't see any need for that because this is in my garage. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like or subscribe if you want to. Make a comment if you want to as well. I'm just a novice when it comes to this stuff. I have been watching a lot of YouTubes, reading a lot of things on, on the internet, trying to learn how this works and to get better at it. A lot of fun, 500 tilapia in this system right now. Um, it's about 2,100 gallons of water, uh, not including the reserve tank that I showed you. This video was just to show you a couple of things that uh, I've done just to make this system operate a little, uh, you know, a little more.
sufficient, I guess you could say. Um, I would say that that's the fun part of this system, is once you get it up and going, it's the small tweaks to see if you can get better capacity, better efficiency. If you have anything to ask me, you can even send me an email directly if you want to. Thanks so much. Take care.